Brian, welcome. Hi, I'm Abby. I'm the marketing manager for Refit Digital. Um, if you don't know much about me, my previous life consisted of being a video producer, production manager in the end, and also working with content. Um, I used to work overseas and used to do shoots for um, travel guides. Um, and video was something that I became really, really passionate about. So today I'm going to talk to you all about um, where, what I think the big deal with video is. And this is definitely more to do with um, digital video and social media. Okay, so over the next few years, we can expect the power of online video to enable more than half of humanity to learn, share, innovate, and participate. Now that's really exciting. Like for someone like me who loves collaboration and loves people being able to share their thoughts, their feelings, and just information, it's such a great thing to kind of think that online video can enable people to do all of this kind of stuff. And the barrier to entry is so low that you can just do it with your mobile phone in your living room. Um, and by 2020, video is estimated to be 82% of consumer web traffic. Now, that's huge. That really is when you consider 82% of web traffic just being video content. And in a world seemingly in, in, with infinite choice and scarcity of attention, video remains the favorite pastime. And what I'm gonna go into is the reason why it's favorite pastime. Um, and now I really want to point out as well about human behavior, and I will keep going over user behavior during this because I think that the two go hand in hand because ultimately we as consumers digest content in a certain way. Our eyes move three to four times a second to process new information. We're naturally, digest uh, we're naturally attracted to, di to digestible content. But naturally, if you imagine that if we're looking two to, well, three to four times a second, that's a lot of content to take in in one second. And we can do that through video content. It allows us to process so much more information than actually just reading something. Now, in a world where people can watch whatever they want on any device, and whenever they can squeeze in, capturing attention is hard, right? We've all been told that through social media. We're constantly being told that it's hard. But actually, it's not hard. It's all about knowing exactly what it is you want to present to your customer, to your consumer, to your viewer at exactly the right time. I love GIFs. There's quite a lot of GIFs in here. I'm sorry about that. Um, if you're increasing brand awareness and ad recall, these should come into consideration during your campaign. Now, the reason why I want to go over these is because I think people tend to miss these kind of things when they're talking about video. A lot of people tend to go, let's just make a video and put it out there. But the truth is, you really have to think about these things before you're actually making your content. Otherwise, you can't expect anyone to actually want to see it or process it, digest it, and then take action onto it. So what you have to think about with capturing attention is to pull consumers in with sight and sound. Now, it sounds really simple, but if you don't have the sight there, you just have the sound, then you're looking at a podcast, and that's different behavior. The same with if you're just using a video content without sound, again, it's different behavior because you're asking them to do different things. Now, be relevant by focusing on their preferences and not just demographics. I think too many people tend to think about who the end user is in terms of, well, you know, they're they're a millennial, they're gonna like this certain thing because of that. Well, no, if you think about your own personal preferences compared to someone else who's also in your demographic, it's never gonna be the same. You can add target people in this way, but you can't just blanket people with content in the same way. <clears throat> now consider the platform and user behavior. Now think about how you digest content. If you're using, say, um, Facebook and you're scrolling, you're usually doing something else. And I'll go into this a bit, uh, in a bit more detail later, but you're usually doing something, so you're distracted. You're not actually engaging with the content. Now think about if you're watching something on a desktop, say YouTube, you've actively gone there to go and do something. Your behavior is different because you've gone, I'm gonna spend 20 minutes to go and watch this video to learn something or to find out something. It's a completely different behavior. So you have to keep that in mind when you're actually making content for people. Um, and one of my favorite things is measuring and reacting to data. Now, the reason why this is so important is because if you don't measure and then react, you can't actually adapt and be get better with your engagement. If you think about it in terms of uh, measuring, you're just try you're trying to see like where people have gone to in the video, where it is they clicked off, what it is they decided to act on, and the same with then actually acting on that data. If, you're, if you notice that, for example, one video doesn't work very well, but then a different video in a different style works better, then it's a no-brainer. That is the kind of one you should then um, progress with because each time you react and look at the data, you're gonna learn loads more about it and actually get better and better and better. Now, I have the golden content rules. These are my rules, so a lot of people may disagree with them or they may have different ones they wanna put in, but to me, I found that these always work really well. So I always try to go by who is it and where is it going? So you, I don't think you can make any content without knowing exactly who it is you want to target with that content and then thinking about the platform that's going to go on to. Because again, like I said, user behavior is different on every single platform. Um, and then what's the purpose? 
So why is it are you making this? Why are you making this piece of content? Who is it going to go to? What's the purpose for it? What's the call to action that you want to get out of making this piece of content? Uh, and then how are we distributing? So I think it's important to think about the end game because ultimately, if you want someone to do something, then if you want someone to do something and you're putting a video out there, and say, for example, in my old company, we used to spend so much money on content, um, say seven grand, but then we'd spend 100 pounds promoting it. You spend that amount of money to actually make the content, then only spend a small amount to try and get it out there. If you're putting a high production value into something, you really need to think about the best way to get it seen. So are you going to work with influencers? Are you going to put more ad spend behind it? Are you trying, going to try and like, get organic reach out there? Just think about what your end game is with how you're going to get people to actually see your content. Um, and then, how are we going to measure the success of it? So it could just be that for you, you're doing a brand awareness campaign, and therefore you just want people to see your content, engage with it, and just know who you are, so then later on you can target them. Or it might be that actually you want, you're an e-commerce site, and that actually what you want to get out of it is people clicking on your product to go and buy it. So in that case, that's going to also influence the content that you make. And then what can you learn from it? So ultimately, all of these things, then come, you should be able to come out with it afterwards and go, do you know what? I actually have learned so much from this, and I know next time I'm not going to do it that way. Or you might go, I've learned loads from this, and that was a really good way to do it. So next time, let's adapt on that, build on it, and let's do it this way. Um, I think that if you can't answer any of these, then I do say that I don't think you should make the content until you're aware of all of these things, because it's a lot of time and effort to make content, um, especially video content. I, don't, I think people will drastically underestimate the time of it. So I think that you should always use this as a starting block to then progress on to. Um, and today, more than half of 18 to 49-year-olds in the UK are either light viewers of TV or do not subscribe to TV, but over 90% of them watch online video content. Now, I think this is a lot about user behaviour and how uh, we're progressing with TV. I mean, I can't remember the last time that I sat down to watch a TV show. I don't remember the last time I did it, and I probably wouldn't choose to do it anymore. Um, but equally, I watch Netflix or Amazon Prime or YouTube daily. And I think that's a really th important thing to consider. The industry themselves have only just kind of cottoned onto this. But when you think about people's behaviour, I think that if you learn to track and see what trends are, you can kind of jump ahead of the curb and definitely start thinking about this stuff way before people go, do you know what, they're not watching it, so therefore let's put more money into making content. Now, I want to talk about lean back and lean, for lean forward viewing. Um, I think it gets glossed over quite a lot when actually it's super important. Now, what I mean by uh, lean back viewing is what you do when you're watching TV, technically. I can almost guarantee that most of you aren't engaging with TV when it's on. Because it's in the background, you've got your phone next to you, picking up, you're talking to someone, maybe you're looking in your iPad at something else, or doing some shopping, or thinking about something else, or having a conversation. It's just not engaging. Whereas if you consider lean forward viewing, things like YouTube, where you've actively gone to that platform to view, it's a different user behaviour because that person is more engaged. Um, the reason why I've spoken about this is because more and more people are doing more lean back viewing with traditional outlets and doing more lean forward viewing with more unorthodox viewing. So if you think about social, social media, you really have a chance to um, engage that lean forward audience. And I think it's really important to start paying attention to that because it's going to be a huge thing. Now, you have to consider user behaviour. Um, as I said, it's, it is really, really important. You have to think about why it is that someone's going to that platform for content, um, how it is that you're then going to target them with the right message at the right time. So, for example, I've used this as an example. I am very guilty of doing this, of trying to follow YouTube tutorials and failing miserably. But that's my reason for going to YouTube. I've reset a boiler via it. I have learned all about countries' destinations. I've done a million things via YouTube. I've never learned anything from Instagram video. <laughs> I think mean, that's a really important thing to remember, is that different platforms have a different message and follow it. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, this video. It's been about a week, you may have already seen it. It's already now 2.7 million views. Now that is insane. Um, and this is on Facebook. And I thought, oh, I'll give it a watch and see what you could do as well. It's interesting. Would I share it? No. But lots of other people have it.
one to hear reviews on Facebook in four days. <laughs> So, like I said, you need to really think about how your audience is going to uh, how your audience is going to engage with that content. And all of those videos were insane amounts of engagement. People sharing, people commenting, tagging, and that's really what it's all about: is actually getting that engagement. More like the algorithms work more and more on engagement. So it's really, really important to consider that and consider. Um, the, the pub quiz test. So I once went to a talk um, by the guy who used to work for the Lab Bible, and he always said that if you're going to do, if you're going to make any kind of content, think about if you'd share it down the pub. If you were sitting there with your mates and you'd be like, I saw this really funny video where it had a fox and a woman's like on our, on our shoulder. Like you would, you'd probably talk about it and probably want to go and show them. But then if it was a video that was like, oh, I saw this really interesting interview that was about toilet roll. You, you wouldn't share it because you'd be like, well, why was I watching that? And B, be like, well, that's not interesting for them. So always kind of put a filter on everything and think, is this going to be interesting for the viewer? Um, so 96% of uh, online video consumption is on mobile. Um, and this for users is... Um, Right, so basically, when you think about your phone um, and you think about how you digest content, more and more video is becoming vertical. And it's really important to start taking note of this because um, we always tend to think that it should always be this way, but it shouldn't be. If you think about how many times you actually turn your phone round to actually watch content in that way, you don't. As humans, we're inherently lazy. If there's an easier way to do it, we will. It's that simple. And even just turning your phone that way, it, it never goes that way, first of all. You're always trying to increase the screen size. You're always trying to do something. The first five seconds goes and you haven't paid attention to it. Um, so start thinking more and more about how you can engage your audience with different styles of content. 
Now, stories um, should be short form, experimental, attention grabbing, interactive videos that will take the audience on a journey to, provi to provide an otherwise unseen element of your brand. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this is because Instagram stories, when it first came out, I was very much like, no, no one's gonna pay attention to that. Video looks horrible in vertical. Why would anyone use that? Well, it's happening more and more. So vertical video isn't anything new. It's been over 12 years in the making. It's just that it's taken this long to cotton on. Now, it's all about understanding the global shift from 16 by nine to nine by 16. Now, I think there's some really, really good brands on uh, Instagram using vertical video to their advantage through stories. Um, and I think that you've just kind of got to get your head around the fact that people are lazy, so they're not going to turn their phone. And how can you tell a story through a screen size that's so much more than it used to be? Um, Costa do it really well. I'm not a fan of Costa at all in any way, but their stories are always really, really engaging. At the moment, they're running one about the fact that they're getting rid of all their plastic. Um, so it's interesting to kind of see that story develop. It's a key part of their brand message. So they're using it more and more. Um, the same with, I think, oh, sorry, my contact lenses are awful. I think that's misguided. Um, they are awesome. They know their audience. They know exactly what it is they want to target them with. And they're always thinking about inter like interesting ways to show off clothing. And they've got this whole thing going where it's all about the misguided babes and creating a culture around it. And therefore, you know, it's all about, it's not just about buying clothes. It's all about being part of the babe gang and being interesting and share your stuff and all oh, look at this. And they'll always put a pop in things like about celebrities because everyone loves the Kardashians if they love misguided. Like, so it's all about thinking about those people and how to target them with that kind of content. Um, and then the same with Unilad. I really like the style of things they do. So they usually give over um, their Instagram story to influencers now and again um, who are relevant with their audience and just get them to do Q&A sessions. It's literally so simple, but it's a really nice way that ties in with their brand. So it's all about getting people to engage with them and actually actively ask questions and kind of get a conversation going through vertical video. Now, content. I'm only going to touch on this briefly because Dan has a really awesome talk lined up that goes into depth more with content itself. Um, but my biggest thing with content is to be authentic and be honest to your brand because the thing with video is it's so easy to fake it but people uh, are more likely to pick up on it if you are faking it because at the end of the day video is it shows everything you've got emotion through what you're looking at you've got the sound the way someone's speaking um, even the story itself. So if you think about that, if you're watching something where someone just isn't into it, um, they're maybe they're lying or they're just not you know, giving as much passion as you want them to, it comes through on video. So you really need to think about actually, how can you tell an honest story to you? It could be that you're um, an e-commerce site and that you, know, you really wanna shift your clothing um, through the right kind of engagement with the audience and you really wanna get behind um, certain influencers. But say then you're, I don't know, pairing up with the wrong influencer, it's gonna come across because it's not relevant for your story. So I've put a summary here um, of just things that I want you to remember in future. So video is all about, video is great for increasing brand awareness and ad recall. Always consider putting customers in with sight and sound. Be relevant by focusing on their preferences and not just demographics. Consider the platform and user behavior. Measuring and reacting to your data is key. The golden content rules. User behavior, lean forward versus lean back. Uh, be experimental and consider vertical and then be authentic to your video content. Now, I wouldn't be a marketing manager if I didn't plug. Um, we've got some awesome resources on our website, so please go check them out. There is a, some things on there about video optimization, Google Trends, and how to write on contact um, journalists. Sometimes.